All right, guys, I just did a review on the last two chapters of Naruto, and then I did a whole video on part three of Naruto coming out. My opinions on that. Had to do a review now on One Piece, the latest chapter of that. Um, 766. So, um, again, after so many arcs of One Piece, the author still does, does tragedy flashbacks a justice. Like, he pulls this out of his head. And, you know, this was one of those times where I was just like, how can you make this flashback truly touching? Like, you have to pull something out of your head amazing for me to really get behind this because it's just like, it seems like Law grew up with this family, this Don Quixote family, and he was taught by them everything he knew and loved by them. And it's just like, how do you turn from that into hating them and uh, wanting to kill them all. It's just like, you really have to pull some heartstrings. And he also does a great job. I don't think he does a perfect job, um, but he does, did a decent job. I mean, was I bawling to tears? Um, no, but you know, I, I definitely felt it, it made logical sense why um, he would feel some, some loss now. Uh, with Corazon dying. I'm sure he's going to die. And so, um, in this chapter, it really sort of illustrated that. Again, I don't really very much like these sort of flashbacks uh, in terms of... I mean, I like the flashbacks in certain ways, but I don't like tragedy that much in terms of manga because it's just like... Sometimes it's unrealistic. Sometimes it pulls on your heartstrings by um, really just... In, in terms of One Piece, at least, it's mainly just destroying innocence or uh, finding, uh, painting someone who's really good-hearted, who does some great good-hearted things, and then just slaughtering them or just... Uh, it's always un some sort of unrightful killing of some sort. And it, it is somewhat of a naive sort of depiction of reality in a way because it's like it doesn't really happen always like that um there's obviously a lot of unjust killing of good people in the real world but generally it's just like eh. having said all that though um as far as one piece goes this chapter i felt was uh pretty you know it's what was expected to happen and yet he did throw in a little bit of spice from a scale of 1 to 10, I wouldn't put this as a rating of 10 out of 10. I would put it at a solid 8 out of 10 chapter. Um, and the reason being, like, you know, there was some spice thrown into it. You see Corazon coming in and you know, you know, or technically you expected him to, uh, like, you thought he would die um, from the clincher in the last chapter. But somehow he managed to kill all these people and escape. And finally get the fruit to law. And then he's wounded and he dies. And then we see the whole Virgo thing which was somewhat unexpected. That was some spice thrown in. Um, I, I, and I, I was not expecting that at all. I thought, you know, maybe Corazon would just die there. And then Law would just be like, I'll avenge you. And then go on his own way. And then Don Quixote somehow escapes the, the uh, ambush with his family. Instead, we have here this whole uh, thing with, uh, by the way, that that whole scene where you see the whole Don Quixote family walking in uh, on shore onto the island and in his one hand he has his the, the, uh, the Denden Mushi which is attached to that little child uh, holding it in the air and then on his left side he has like the, he's holding one of the marines by the head just like effortlessly. And then he's got the whole backdrop of all these uh, Don Quixote family members that are all so strong. It's just like amazing, it's a huge, de huge, hugely awesome depiction. Um, but back on track though, I felt that whole thing where they come on shore and they realize something was up 
and then uh, you see that uh, Corazon was severely injured, but he he survives, and then you realize that oh he has to he wants you to deliver something to um, the Marines so everything will go well and they'll be captured, and then Virgo comes along, and it's just like it's a very weird sort of thing, and I really like that sort of spice thrown in there because you know Virgo is dead now, but then you realize Virgo didn't really get his just desserts when he died anyways but he did because he's dead now in a way and um the reason he didn't really get his just desserts was because when he died he was somewhat just like uh, eh, uh even if i die you will be ruined so it's you know somewhat like that but still it still pulls at your heartstrings when you see virgo crushing his legs into Corazon. So generally that was a chapter in a nutshell. Um, the strings went up b from uh, Don, Don Flamingo and he enacted Birdcage. So um, the chapter ends with a sort of cliffhanger but it was somewhat like you can somewhat predict what's going to happen in the next chapter pretty assuredly actually because Corazon says I'll probably be able to uh, get law out but I probably will die in the process how I don't know how but he's gonna do it somehow and that that's pretty much gonna be what happens I predict that's gonna happen and then law's gonna you know I hope the flashback ends then and then he goes on his way and now he wants to avenge um, everything and kill Don, Don Flamingo again uh, there's this whole philosophy thing, which I, if I have time, I'll talk about on my main channel, youtube.com slash will you laugh. That's why are you, um, uh, but generally what that is about is, um, it's uh, the whole philosophy of how, uh, people kill other people because they feel like that's the greatest punishment they can give someone. But at the same time, it's like, is that tr really true? Like you see in stories in real life, oftentimes, uh, epics and other things, they want to avenge uh, a death or a avenger wrong by killing an enemy but then that uh, that that remarks on that, that that sort of uh brings up the whole debate of whether death is truly the biggest punishment you can give someone because some people want to die others aren't having great lives or others would have greater torture or pain or uh, i guess you could say suffering by being caged or locked in jail forever rather than being executed immediately or um, in our cases, just, uh, uh, they, uh, they would be more miserable, just, uh, bored and alive. So that's, that's a philosophy thing that I'll leave to my other channel, my main channel. But, um, I, uh, it is interesting how this whole sort of thing plays out. And I definitely think that this, uh, it's, uh, this chapter was a clear depiction of how the author is definitely making things up generally as he goes. I mean, sure, he may have vague ideas of the future in mind, but whether or not he lays out the storyline one chapter at a time or 10 chapters at a time or 100 chapters at a time, I do think generally he does make it up as he goes. At a maximum, probably like 30, 50 chapters at a time. There's no way he he lays out the story a hundred chapters out at a time. Why? Because when the whole Law vs. Virgo fight occurred and he finally killed Virgo, that whole death thing and, and execution thing was not so epic and Law didn't really give so much emotion uh, to the execution of Virgo there and then. Um, and I feel like the reason was because the author of One Piece had yet to uh, um, yet to really come up with what had come what had occurred in uh, the latest chapter, which was this whole thing where Virgo did so much wrong to Law. Uh, he had yet to come up with that. Um, but generally, though, I feel like this whole thing with uh, uh, this whole thing with Virgo and Law, it is still somewhat just now that you think about it. And I guess the final thing to remark on is the whole whole thing that Law can do virtually nothing with his powers. 
because it's not. I mean, um, it, it's somewhat sad because with other other devil fruit, boom, you can start fighting immediately. If you had something like the uh, the flame fruit that um, that was lost by, uh, I think it was uh, Ace Por Porcus the Ace, that was something that was like, okay, I know what you, I, I know what I can do with that. I have flame now. Uh, but again, with something like uh, maybe uh, Luffy's ability or Laws in this case, you know, it's kind of somewhat sad that he can't do anything. He can't heal people immediately. So it is somewhat like, okay, you have to develop the surgical skills, the medical skills, knowledge of all the cells of the body. And uh, then, you know, over time you develop other skills like, uh, you know, subtleties with your ability to be able to control everything and rearrange body parts and little uh, specialty techniques with your ability so he doesn't have any of that and it's gonna cost him because he uh, you know he, he can't do anything probably Corzin is gonna die it's a tragedy but we already know what happens because uh, we generally know because it's a flashback we know Corzin's dead now and this whole thing with um, you know Corzon being I, I mean it's it, it really does pull your heartstrings because you know that Corzon's like this this man who's like the younger brother of uh, uh, Don Flamingo and he is uh, one of the Ten Rebuto in terms of blood and he's this, this good guy trying to do good things and then he's got this brother who's just completely wicked and evil um, uh, and that's that's something on its own and it, it really does pull at your heartstrings because it's, it's like hey not all Ten Rebuto are bad people this was a man who lived a great life and that whole final panel of this chapter again very hard hard touching he does a great job with this i i mean i feel like ichira oda the author he he does a better job of painting these sort of uh heartstring pulling tragedy uh flashbacks not necessarily always flashbacks but tragedies than a lot of even novelists do and so generally you know that's that's what happens you know the the final panel of him just smiling and when he's about to uh, let uh, you know law escape somehow still you know very touching and at the same time somewhat illogical because it's like i never really fully grasped why he wanted to help him it didn't really make logical sense you want to go all this way for this little kid who wants to stab you wants to kill you and i mean i guess you have some likeness because you suffered something similar uh but again it's just like too much i guess um i guess it makes somewhat sense um and again, the whole, I never really understood the whole thing with him, um, you know, and uh, Law, I mean, not Law, uh, Don Flamingo being so corrupt. Don Flamingo, uh, I mean, he is corrupt and evil in a lot of ways. He just wanted to kill everybody, uh, take control of the whole world. He thinks he's like royal blood and stuff, and he's so much better than everyone. But at the same time, it's just like, uh, okay, I guess, I guess you're wicked. Um... Uh, so what of it but I, I it does make general sense at the end of the day and uh, the again the final panel reminded me of what happened with uh, uh, Robin Robin's flashback and that giant who uh, taught Robin how to laugh and how he he died laughing pretty much uh, the same way and again the, uh, this whole one piece thing is based around laughing laughing in a way and smiling just think of Goldie Roger and Luffy. They're always smiling. So that's what we want to say in a nutshell. Uh, very much uh, enjoyed the chapter overall. You know, it wasn't the best chapter. As always, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.